Rob Ring here with Kafka TV, uh, entertainment correspondent speaking with Mike Reno of legendary Canadian rock band Loverboy. First off, Mike, thank you so much for Pleasure taking the time right. to come in here with us. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I just, and firstly, I need to say what an honor it is to be with you here, because Loverboy was such a huge part of the soundtrack of my youth. Um, I think Turn Me Loose, the bass line tonight was probably you know, the first thing I ever played on the bass. Nice. I think, you know, you could almost call it the bass equivalent of Smoke on the Water. Wow, it's, what a compliment. Yeah, so, you know, how does it feel to be in a band with that kind of influence and that kind of impact culturally? It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, everywhere we go, everybody knows the songs, they know the lyrics, it's just a big party everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. It's a giant party every night. Uh, our biggest problem is trying to get the sound over the audience because they sing so loud I yeah. barely hear myself some of the time. Which is not a, you know, a bad problem to have. Yeah, no, if, if that's the biggest problem you have, that's a good place to be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so how did it, Loverboy end up being here in Kitchener tonight with Glass Tiger? Well, we're up promoting a new album which will be out very soon and we opened ourselves up to doing the show for them. Mm -hmm. Dave FM. Yeah. Rock and roll. Give the plug to Dave FM. And they'll be playing our songs on the radio and we said yes we'll do it. And I think Dave FM was offering it uh, as, a, as a promotional thing for its yeah. listeners. Yes. And so we said sure we'd love to do it. We're going to be in London tomorrow night and then uh, we're going to be uh, in another city the night after. Okay, so it's a mini tour with Glass Tiger. I don't know if they're going to be there both it's, both other nights, to tell you the truth. Yeah. All I know is that we've just put the finishing touches on a new album. Yeah. And so they're mixing it now. Like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's, and that's we're going to play some new stuff tonight for the crowd. And as always, there's usually a little press to do and yeah. a few hands to shake and babies to kiss us. So that's why we're here right now. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, I'm just thinking back. Well, obviously not thinking back, but... Loverboy, the early days, you know, Get Lucky, that sort of era. Mm -hmm. well, actually, even before Get Lucky, your first album, was there sort of a pivotal moment where suddenly you realized, wow, you know, we're, we're really doing this, we're successful, and this is our career for real? I think the pivotal moment for me was when we had taken a, a cheap, no changey uh, holiday to Mexico, and actually it was. Matt, our drummer, and his girlfriend, and Paul, the guitarist, and me, and our girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And I got a call through the hotel because there's no phones in the rooms. So it was one of those kind of Mexican holidays. <laughs> and the phone call was from uh, Bruce Allen, who said, I know you're in Mexico and you just got there, but you got to go back to Los Angeles as fast as possible. Dick Clark wants you on the show this weekend. And I kind of sat down and went, Dick Clark, American Bandstand, yeah. this weekend. Wow, my life is about to change. Mm -hmm. And it did. No, that, that was a pivotal moment that, for me. So that was pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Um, yeah. So back, you know, in the early '80s, there was so much happening musically, especially in Canada. There were so many amazing bands: Loverboy, Glass Tiger, The Spoons, Honeymoon Sweet. What do you think about you know what's happening today in Canadian music? Is there anything that's really exciting you right now, or what are you listening to? Arcade of Fire is awesome. Yeah. I've always loved uh, the Canadian talent. There's a lot of stuff out there right now, but uh, everywhere I go, I keep reading about Arcade of Fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's just awesome. And of course, we've got our good old standbys that uh, always seem to put out great music. But uh, I think this Canadian Idol is producing some pretty cool things too. And I'm just proud that Canada's coming up with such awesome stuff that's accepted worldwide. Because yeah. uh, Loverboy's always waving the Canadian flag. You know, we don't. Uh, yeah. A lot of people at the beginning didn't know where we were from. They thought we were from Cincinnati or something. Mm -hmm. right? Well, because you had such huge success in the U.S. particularly. And it was probably because of that, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we let everybody know we're from Canada. Very proud of it. That's fabulous. And uh, one other question about your first album. Um, the cover art on that album was actually a photographer, Barbara Asman, from Toronto. I'm just wondering, how did that come to be? Or was the band not really involved in cover art then. Do you know what? They uh, they sent Barbara uh, the CD and the lyrics and I don't even know if she had the lyrics but she she found the lyrics to one of the songs. Oh, okay. She was taking a test. She was actually going to get somebody 
in the picture, and she took a test with the cable, mm -hmm. and she stood there against the backdrop, and she pressed click, and she ran over and got the Polaroid out of the thing, but before open, opening it up, she typed the lyrics to one of the Loverboy's songs, mm -hmm. and it splashed onto the photograph, and she turned, and then she, she get, you know, waited the 30 seconds, ripped it open and went, holy smokes. Yeah. There's the album cover right there. So she, I think, lucked on it as well. Oh, that's and they weren't going to use our pictures on the front anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so our pictures were going to be on the back. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of probably a fluke for her. And the record company wanted her to do it. And it turned out wonderful. Yeah, I think maybe a fluke that really sparked her career. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that was actually interesting. The KW Art Gallery locally has that Loverboy album in its collection there. Isn't that you nice? They collect to ask its work. Nice. I'd like to see that co that collection of work. Yeah, definitely. It's a whole series which is similar in vein to that one. So Loverboy may have you know, made a great contribution to Canadian art. Nice. That's nice <laughs> to know. I know one thing, our Get Lucky album. Yeah was voted at, as the top 100 of album covers of all time. Oh, well, I believe it. It's, so that was it's kind of a compliment, locked too. In, yeah, it's such an iconic pretty piece. Well, the, 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 the photographer in that particular piece tried to find out a little bit about us, and, the, and all the record company says, well, I don't know, I think the lead singer wears red pants. <laughs> and they said, red pants? Yeah, red leather pants. Yeah. So he put that whole concept around what a record company says. And then, you know, record companies aren't the, aren't the brightest bulbs in the in the package, but, and that turned out good too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, the, those red pants then, they really are a cultural icon. Where are they now? What happened to those pants? Well, the Hard Rock uh, Cafe in Whistler bought them. Okay. And then I think they sold them to someone else, but I think they're in the Hard Rock Hotel <laughs> in Las Vegas, okay. pretty sure. And there's also a pair in the Hard Rock Hotel in Orlando. So there were multiple pairs of red leather pants. Well, you had to have a few pairs because, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can only wear it once and then take three days to dry. And I think uh, we auctioned a pair off uh, for our uh, charity of choice, which is Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And we raised uh, 1,500 American mm -hmm. from a fan. So, you know, there's at least three, three pairs kicking around. Oh. And, of course, I have a, p a pair under these nice comfortable jeans of mine. Yeah. There's a pair of red leather yeah. pants under <laughs> All right, well, I won't take much more of your time, but just one more quick question. I mean, you must have seen some crazy things in your time you know, as a rock performer. What is your craziest road story? Craziest thing from the road? Oh, you know, there's a lot of crazy stories, but I remember uh, kind of babysitting Eddie Van Halen through Toronto one time, and uh, he was, it was a day off, so he wanted to go out and have a good time, and I didn't realize how good of a time that he likes to have, so I tended to be his like a Canadian ambassador of mm -hmm. good health, saving him from getting his butt kicked all over town as he went around and gave the Eddie, Eddie Van Halen show, and I even received a phone call from Valerie Bertinelli going, Mike, where the hell's my husband? <laughs> that was a fun day. Yeah. That goes down in one of my top ten fun days. Yeah. And Danger Day. I should have got Danger Pay for that Danger Day. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, it must be just quite a life you lead. And awesome, yeah, good yeah. times. Are you still loving every minute of it? I'm uh, loving every minute of it. All right, that's great. All right, well, thank you very much again, Mike Reno. Right, appreciate it. Lover Boy, check out the new album coming out. Well, uh, first single's in March. First single in March. Make sure you check that out. And thank you again. My pleasure.